Hey everybody, I'm so glad you're here this morning, or at least it's morning here. It's not even seven o'clock. The Lord in my worship time wanted me to share this with somebody out there. I hope it resonates. Y'all, you cannot do anything bad enough in this life that Jesus does not want you as his child. And here's how I know. I'm going to bring you this story that's in Acts chapter 9. We're going to start in verse 3. Y'all, it's about Saul, Paul. His first, For a while, his name was Saul, and then after he converted to Christianity, his name was changed to Paul. This man was putting Christians in prison. And it is probably understood that they would be executed. And then the guy became a Christian himself, but it took some shaking for him to change his ways. So this is the story about the shaking that occurred in his life so that he could finally see the truth. All right. He had gotten permission from the priests, the high priests, to go to Damascus, the city of Damascus, and start arresting believers in Jesus Christ. I mean, that was his mission. And he was passionate about it, y'all. So we're going to start in verse 3. As he, this is Paul, was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but they saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind Y'all, he was blind, and I think the reason he was blind in his eyes is because he was blind in his soul. He could not see and had not seen Jesus. Jesus wants to reveal himself to us, but we've got to open up our eyes and see the truth. So when he opened up his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now, this is what, this is the part of the story I think is, is they're a little bit funny. Forgive me. There's probably nothing funny about this, but um, anyway, there was this believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias, yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord exclaimed Ananias. I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem, and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. So Ananias gets his vision. Go go talk to Paul over here at, at, at Judas's house, not Judas Iscariot, another man named Judas. And like Ananias is like, Uh, excuse me, God, Uh, that guy is throwing people like me into prison. And can't you imagine Ananias telling his wife that morning, I'm going over to Saul, the Lord. And she's probably saying, are you sure you heard the voice of the Lord? (laughs) And he's probably like, yeah, I heard it. I got to go. What if he put you in prison? And he says, I got to obey God. So Ananias is like rocking this. He's kind of buried in scripture as not being a a big hero, but man, he 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 was very courageous. But the Lord said to Ananias, "Go, 
For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings, as well as to the people of Israel, and will show him, and I will show him, how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized after he ate some food and regained uh, afterwards he ate some food and regained his strength Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days and immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues saying he is indeed the son of God y'all i don't know what Saul what Jesus revealed to him over those 3 days but it was enough to change his life in 3 days he went from arresting Christians to becoming a Christian. Don't you know what he had done before he became a believer haunted him the rest of his life that he wrestled with that? He suffered physically for Christ. And Peter tells us if you ever are beaten and bleed for the cause of Christ, you won't want to sin anymore because you believe in him so much. Saul was a chosen person. Even in the midst of his sin, Jesus saw him. Even You cannot do anything. I don't care if you're strung out on drugs right now, drinking, having affairs, cheating on your, on your wife, on your husband. It doesn't matter. Jesus is beside you saying, stop that. Look and see me. And he will cause the scales to fall off your eyes so you can see him. So the cool thing about this story, I mean, there's a lot of cool things. But the thing that really sticks out to me is what follows. He goes out and starts preaching immediately that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. And all who heard him were amazed. And then, you know, the powers that be got really whacked it and felt threatened by Saul's preaching. So they were going to kill him. And the other believers in Damascus, I mean, I can just see them getting together saying, we got to get Paul out of here. We Or Saul, Saul, Paul, we got to get him out of here. And y'all, y'all know what he, what they did? They made a basket or they had a basket. They put Paul in a basket and they lowered him at night. Here it is. You know, they, after a while, some of the Jews were playing to, so during the night, some of the other believers, I'm sorry about the camera here. Some of the other believers lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the city walls. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with other believers, but they were afraid of him. You know, and so that whole thing went on with Saul and he became a giant in our Christian faith. He wrote a lot of the New Testament all because he allowed himself to encounter Jesus, he was blind, but then he saw. All right, this has gone kind of long, sorry. But, oh, y'all, this rocks. Jesus is the Son of God, and it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. It can't be any worse than what Saul was doing. He wants you to follow him. He's got a plan for you. There's hope, y'all, in Jesus. Just follow him. Let him heal you. All right, that's all I have. This is Gina Lima Charlie. I'm out.